Hey guys, it's your girl Carrie. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, today you get to see my face for a few minutes because today we are talking all about nail fees and I'm gonna have to do some splaining. So I got my coffee brewing back there. It's uh, 10 o'clock on a Sunday morning and I've already done some filming for this. So we need some more coffee. Um, I'm gonna talk to you about how I film my nail fees and what considerations I keep in mind when I am taking my nail fees. And I am going to walk you through where I shoot, what time of day I shoot, how I do the lighting, how I do the angles, and then some of the props and some other considerations. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, then stick around and get into it. So before I get into a demo, let me first talk about some considerations. And the first one is gonna be lighting. So you might choose to do natural lighting. And if that's the case, some things you wanna keep in mind is that if you take photos in the early morning, you're gonna have cooler lighting. And by that, I mean, it's just gonna give more of like a cool toned cast. And as far as late afternoon, you're gonna get more of a warmer lighting. And I'm sure you've heard the phrase golden hour, and that's because you get like that golden cast in the light, so. I would suggest avoiding midday, which kind of gives you that flat look. It's just too harsh lighting, that's full sunlight. It's just not the best. And keep in mind that some mattes and hollow glitters are gonna look better in full shade. So if you're taking photos of those in sunlight and they're just not looking very good, I would say try moving to the shade. Your other option is gonna be artificial lighting. So that may just be existing lights in your house or that could be something you purchase on the side like a ring light. The good thing about these is that the lighting is always going to be good. It doesn't matter if it's storming outside, you're still going to have good lighting. And it can be adjustable, you know, dimmed, or the temperature can sometimes be changed to complement the colors in your mani. The only thing I'll say about that is, of course, there is the limitation as to how, I mean, how many different hand positions and poses and movements you can make. And then also cost is going to be a factor, you know, the sun's free, right? <laughs> As for me, my preference is definitely to use natural lighting. I just find I can't get quite as pretty photos with artificial, but I have seen a lot of people on Instagram that do. So it may just be operator error, but I just find that that's the best look for me. And I do have a much easier time adjusting the angles and the shadows because I can just move my body in an infinite number of positions until I get a look that I like. So the only time you really see me use artificial lighting, and I'll show you what I use, is if it's really storming and I, I can't get good lighting at all for a few days, or if for some reason I'm just not getting a good photo out in sunlight and I can only get a good lighting situation with artificial, but that's pretty rare. The other major factor that's gonna come into play is angles and shadows. And I've seen some folks say that, oh, full sunlight is always the best. And I'm just going to have to disagree with that. I just feel like there are some sets that really don't look good at all in full sunlight. And I use the example of matte nails, but it's really true. You may think you have the most flawless set of matte nails, but I promise you take them out in full sunlight and you're going to see all its flaws. And that doesn't mean you didn't do a good job. It just means that light is not flattering for those nails. So a lot of nails are going to photograph better if it's not direct lighting. So I would say, the shadow is your friend and try it. You know, if you try some and you don't like it with the shadow and you want to go back to full sunlight, then, you know, that that's an option. But just give it a try. You might really be surprised with the results. My suggestion here is to just take a bajillion photos and just slightly change the angle, slightly change the lighting just a little bit each time. And I know that sounds silly, but even the slightest change can yield huge results. So... Um, you know, if you're not liking the way things are looking, try adding a little more shadow, try taking away a little shadow, adjust the angle a little bit, and those will help you get to where you like the look of what you're taking. Some other things to think about is you don't need fancy cameras or expensive lighting to take great nail fees. If you want those things, that's fine, but just don't feel like you need those to get good nail fees. And then keep in mind too that some clothing colors can kind of skew the colors in your photographs. So most of our cameras have this automatic white balance in it and it's just designed to adjust the color so that they, the camera thinks it looks right. So I've taken a few photos before where I look kind of corpse-like, but I found if I just changed the color of the sleeve I was wearing, 
then it kind of skewed the white balance uh, back towards a, a flattering color. And then I would also pay attention to what's in your background because they can distract from your nails. And so if you're taking your nail fees over a sink full of dirty dishes, people are probably gonna be staring at their dirty dishes and you want them to stare at your nails, right? So just keep that in mind. Okay guys, are you ready to find out where I shoot, I don't know, 70% of my nail fees? Cause you're gonna think I'm a little crazy, but just bear with me, I'll explain to you why I do it this way. So let me turn the camera around and introduce you to my bathroom. Yes, I take the vast majority of my nail fees in my bathroom and uh, specifically right here in this bathtub right here. So let me talk to you about why this is my ideal place to shoot nail fees. So right here, I've got my, my very large frosted glass window and I'm gonna apologize in advance. Oh, hello, Charlie. <laughs> I'm gonna apologize in advance because we have a partly cloudy day going on here, so the sun is kind of going in and out, but um, hopefully it'll be in enough that I can explain to you how we do this. So usually I'll do this between anywhere at 8.30 and 10.30 in the morning, and that will kind of fluctuate depending on you know daylight savings, the time of year, stuff like that. But usually that's when I get the best sunlight, and you can see it coming in through here, through this window, and what it will do is hit on this wall right here. So. I will actually get in my bathtub and stand in my bathtub and usually Charlie will lay on the mat right here and look at mommy like, what are you doing standing in the bathtub taking pictures of photos? I mean, taking pictures of nails, but anyway, um, this will create a nice kind of canvas for me and I like the that kind of aesthetic, that blank canvas look. So I'm gonna show you some outdoor options here in a little bit, but this is just the way I like to take my nail fees. I like that clean aesthetic, so. I will step in my bathtub and you can see here on this wall, um, I'm fixing to take some nail fees of these uh, Manny Boss nails I did. And I apologize again, cause the sun just keeps going in and out. So it's, it's gonna fight with this a little bit, but what I like to do is, you know, a lot of people really like to shoot straight on and get the full effect of the light. And that's fine. There's, that's definitely a look. Um, but for me at 42, all that does for me is emphasize my pale skin first and foremost, and the wrinkles and the imperfections in my hands that I really don't wanna draw attention to. <laughs> so it's definitely a look. If you have young skin and don't have the wrinkles I do and you know you like all that, you can definitely do this. This is an option. But I think a lot of people are afraid of a little shadow and really a little shadow can be beautiful. It really can create a nice aesthetic. So look how if I just turn a little bit to create the shadow on the left hand side, you know, you still get the full effect of how pretty these dips are, but you kind of just create a nice aesthetic with that shadow on the left hand side where maybe the light is not full on, but you're still getting to see the nails and it's a little bit more flattering of a light. So, okay, finally we get the sun a little bit. So here you can see what I mean. I, I still get that beauty of the dips, but I still get that shadow on that side and that just creates a lot of interest. So again, sorry for the adjusting light, but what can you do? And as far as poses go, I will shoot them like this, or I will turn my hand and shoot them like this, or there's this option too. There's a lot of different you know, hand poses you can try. And I suggest just trying as many as you can. That way you can see what you like. Um, and let me show you what this will be like on the opposite side. And again, depending on like the look too, like look at how well that's catching the glitter on this side from this angle and there goes the sun again. Ugh. It's just gonna be one of those days. There we go, come on. So see what a difference that makes? So, you know, don't be afraid of a little bit of shadow and play with the angle, see which side you like better. And then the other side I like to do is, um, or the other option I like is to actually, excuse my feet, I will shoot downward like this. And the reason why I will shoot like this is because the shadow will typically fall on the side or the, especially the tops of the cuticles. And you know, as, as hard as we try and as good as we think our manis look, that's usually where most of our imperfections are at is right in that cuticle area. So it kind of puts a shadow right where we have those flaws. Excuse my feet, I just noticed in the picture. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, this will, this will kind of disguise any of those imperfections by the way the sun hits it from this angle. One other one that you see me do a lot like this is just kind of loosely holding my hands like this. And you'll see that gets my bath products in the picture, but 
I do have a way to edit that out and I will show you that in part two of this series. So I'm not really worried about that, but if you are, you can just move them out of the way. Okay. So I'm going to pause it right here and get some photos real quick and I will share those with you and, and uh, then we'll come back and look at some other options. Okay guys, this is really weird filming a horizontal by the way. Maybe I need a selfie stick, but nah. But anyway, uh, now we're in my bedroom and I'm going to show you the other place that I will sometimes shoot inside my house. If say I need like indirect sunlight, like I want some light on it, but I don't want it like indirect sunlight. And this is probably going to work really well actually for this Manny because as I'm taking these pictures, I'm discovering that just because of the nature of how pale my skin is and how dark these colors are, direct sunlight even a little bit is kind of washing it out. So I'm gonna take a few in here and I will share those with you, but let me just um, show you what we got going. So I've got many blinds, obviously I don't want those in the picture and I need to lift them so that I can get some full sunlight. So you can see the sun is shining out of my yard and so when I turn to take pictures of this I will get the indirect sunlight so I will get some light in here but it won't be you know super bright it's more like it's indirect sunlight I want to take photos of this I can use the same principles I used in the bathroom I will be um, looking to catch the shadow from one side and let me show you again if I get full sunlight on it, it, it looks pretty good, but it's actually a little better. And again, I say full sunlight, but it's indirect, but it looks a little better if I cast a little shadow on it. So again, full sunlight looks okay. But when you add a little shadow to that, even with indirect sunlight, it just, it just makes a nicer aesthetic. So I will get you a few shots in here and then we will move into the outside. Okay, so I'm gonna take you outside and I'm gonna show you a few places outside. What? <laughs> My husband's looking at me because he's playing his game and he's like, it sounds like there's a bear in the house. There's no bear in the house. He's just playing his game and life is happening here. That's how it works in this house. So I'm gonna take you outside and I will show you the places and the techniques I'll use if I'm gonna shoot outside in sunlight and Charlie's gonna go with this. He knows that when mommy gets her cardigan sleeve on and her rings on that it's time to go outside and take Nelfie's so he's ready. Right, Charlie? Let's go. Okay, so let me talk a little bit about what I have going on here. Um, sorry for the wind noise. I may have to voice over this. But um, I have a very bare lawn. It's just grass back here and a few doggy landmines. And so I don't have a lot of good options out here because of that. And, you know, our house is new construction, so we don't really have any trees or any plants back here. So. You know, over time, I'm sure that's something we'll try to do, but because this is new construction, this is all new, was built for the ground up, there's just, there's not really any vegetation out here. So I'm gonna use similar principles outside that I use inside. I'm going to try to create shadow here. So I will angle down or I may come from over top or I may turn a little bit more one way than the other, but I'm trying to get shadow because again, look at this at full sunlight. It just is not quite as flattering as it would be if I wasn't doing full sunlight. Look at the difference. So again, don't be afraid of shadow. Let me uh, get you some photos out here and I will show you what those look like. Okay, so let's say you need to take nail fees, but the weather's not cooperating. It's stormy or it's overcast. And you can't get good photos. There's a couple of artificial lighting options that you can use. I got both of these off Amazon. And granted, I use them more for YouTube, but they're really good for taking nail fees if I can't get the weather to cooperate with me. So I'm gonna show you both of these and they're relatively inexpensive, but I'll link them down below. So this first one here is actually just a light with a soft box and these are both tabletops. That's why they're sitting on my kitchen counter right now. But 
they are they're just short little um tabletop versions you can get bigger ones but i just didn't want all that just to take nail photos so this is just a, a light with a soft box cover on it and it just makes a really nice look for nails it, it kind of mimics the um light and shade that i was talking about it has how i get cast in the bathroom so it's just kind of a similar effect especially if you catch it from side on Again, same thing. It doesn't look quite as good when it's flat like that. It looks good, but not quite as good, but a little more flattering once you catch it side on and get that uh, that shadow in there. And then the other one I have here is this little um, adjustable lighting with a snoot, which I don't know why, but that word makes me laugh. Snoot. But anyway, what that is is it's got a little uh, like a drawstring thing here, and you can pull this to tighten it to concentrate the light or loosen it to leave it um, a little more diffused. So. You could definitely use this too. It does actually come with a soft box cover also. I think this one only comes in a set of two, but I'll check to see if it's available individually. But even in a set of two, I'm telling you, it's pretty inexpensive. So a lot of folks like to use ring lights. My only issue with ring lights is I feel like they give that really harsh ring look on the fingers, whereas this is a little more of a diffused light. So, you know, whatever your preference is fine. And I know a lot of people do love ring lights. It's I've had one before. I just didn't like how, because how shiny my gel coat top coat is, it would always make a really harsh ring shape on the nails. And I just didn't like the way that looks. So just food for thought. Okay. So here's a few other things you might want to consider. Um, I highly recommend using cuticle oil and I will show you a few in a minute that I like to use. I find uh, cuticle oil can really help disguise any dryness that you have on your hands or your cuticles and it just makes a really nice aesthetic but I would caution you in overusing it. I think there's a point to where you can get a little too much cuticle oil in there and you kind of look a little greasy and you know if that's what you're that's what you're in for then go for it but for some people that can be kind of um, off-putting I guess so you put on your cuticle oil but then what I usually do after is I will dab my nails kind of on a towel and my hands on a towel just so that it's not too moisturized. Um, I always also put hand cream on my hands just to kind of help that skin. And then I will also show you in a minute some um, <clears throat> nail fee sleeve items. So you got a couple options here. You of course can just use any long sleeve shirt or any jacket or any um, cardigan that you like the looks of sweater and just slip it over your arm and just use that. Um, but then if you're looking for some other ideas, there's a few on Amazon, some specialty items that I have, like some fishnet gloves that I use for particular types of manicures. And then uh, there are also some lace gloves that Vivid Clam Co. sells that I really, really like, and I'll show you some of those. Um, and those are especially good for the spring and summer months just because you may feel a little silly with a sweater on when it's 100 degrees outside. So, you know, those are a nice option, especially for the spring and summer, and they just give kind of an upscale look. So I'll show you a few of those. But, you know, other than that, you know, just be creative. I've seen some people on Facebook say that they take a pair of jeans and they slip their finger through the jeans leg, you know, do, do whatever makes you happy. But again, I'm just trying to give you some options here, some things to think about. So let's go take a look at some of my cuticle oils and some of my glam gloves. Okay, so you can see I have no shortage of cuticle oils. So I have, of course, the pin ones here, and then I have the dropper ones. So usually the dropper ones I use at night, um, and then the pin ones I will use when I'm right when I'm getting ready to take nail fees, just so I can kind of target the hydration. <clears throat> but um, Candy Skincare is my favorite company. I would say Grimes Ridge is my second favorite, but I just love everything Candy Skincare comes out with, and I think she has some really fantastic customer service. So. I don't know why I don't have any of her larger bottles. Um, I also have her pens, but I have a ton of these and a ton of different scents. So that's what I would use. Um, and then I'll just use my regular hand cream before um, on my hands before I go in with cuticle oils. Okay, and here are some of my nail sleeve options. So of course I have my sweaters and cardigans, which I use most of the time, but I also have some of these that I got off Amazon and just different color options. They were really cheap and I just grabbed them and they, <clears throat> excuse me, they actually have finger holes in them. So that can kind of make a cool look too. If you like the look of like a, like a sweater sleeve with finger holes in them. And then I, here are some of the glam gloves from Vivid Glam Co. And so I've got a few different color options here, but um, these just make a really pretty look. They do sell these on Amazon. The only thing I would say about that is the quality of these are significantly better than the ones I've gotten from Amazon. And I, I'm, no, I'm not sponsored by her. She has no idea I'm talking about these. <laughs> 
but I just think they're worth the extra expense because they look high quality and they feel high quality and they're going to last a lot better than the cheap ones you get off Amazon. So let me put one of these on so you can see. Okay, so you can see what I mean here. They I mean they come up where my fingers um, come off of my hand and I just, I don't know. I think there's something really classy and pretty about this look. So, you know, this is another option for you. And like I said, especially good during the spring and summer months. Here's one more thing I want to share with you. Um, oh, dog hair on the ring. These are some of my rings that I wear in everyday life and I like them a lot. They're beautiful, but I don't normally film my um, ring area when I am taking Elfies. So usually what I'm seeing is my fingers like this. So I have some mini rings. I have some really nice ones here that I have from Miranda Fry. These ones are all mini rings and I really love them. This one too. So I will use those, but they're mostly more for like my life. You know, I just wear them to work or wear them out and about. So I can use them for nail fees and I will sometimes. But I also have these options from Claire's. Pause please while I open this. So these are not all from Claire's, but um, a lot of them are. They have some, you know, obviously low quality. They're not meant to be luxurious but some really cute different designs for nail fee rings and then some more simple designs and then some knots and some little hearts. I just, I like them because, I just showed that one. I like them because I think they're really cute and they look nice on camera, but they're definitely not gonna be something that you're gonna have out in everyday life. They're just not gonna be that, they're not gonna hold up that well. They're gonna turn your fingers green, so. I keep these just for nail fees. I don't use them for any other purpose. And if you're looking for some nail, for, nail fee midi rings, I highly recommend those. Um, and then I have some others in different sizes that I got from Amazon too. So those are some options too. But as far as midi rings go, Claire's makes some really cute, cheap midi rings. And again, you know, they're, they're really good for taking photos. So I pretty much, I will moisturize my hands put on my my uh, sleeve and my rings and then as, as soon as I'm done I'll take them right back off because they they're just not made to hold up like a regular high quality ring is so you know these you can keep and wear out in everyday life but these I would keep just for nail fees okay so here we are chilling in my bedroom chair I just wanted to cover a few more things before we go um, really what I want to say is I know it's not that serious and this may seem a little silly and like it's taking it too seriously and it's not meant to be that way. It's supposed to be fun. Um, something that you should probably know about me is that the first time I went to college, yes I said first time because I went multiple times, um, my minor was in photography and I chose that because I was very interested in it and that whole minor program just really developed my passion for photography so I just think it's really interesting but then life got busy and then I got away from it. And I don't do it really anymore, so taking nail fees, hi Charlie. Taking nail fees kind of reignited that passion for photography. So that's why I do all this. I know it's not that serious. And if you don't want to do any of this, don't. If you like your nails in direct sunlight and you just want to do that and you don't care about nail fee sleeves and rings, then that's fine. I, that's more power to you. Everybody should do what makes them happy. I'm just trying to give you some ideas and things that you might want to try if you're not happy with the way yours are looking. You know, the point is, try different things. Don't be afraid to take 100 photos. Nobody's going to know that you took 200 photos to get that one really good photo. I take plenty myself, believe me. And sometimes just changing the angle just slightly or just changing the shadow just slightly can make a huge difference in how your manis look. And after all, you worked that hard on them. Don't you want to make them look as good as they look to you in person? So, anyway not saying you have to take this all that seriously I'm just saying these are some things that you might want to try and um, you know other than that if you have any questions or you need some advice on something or you just want to laugh at me because I take photos in my bathroom then that's fine this is supposed to be fun so I hope you'll leave me a comment down below with your thoughts or any questions you may have and while you're there I hope you will consider subscribing before you go and if you like this video I'd appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up because that helps me out a lot and after that, I will see you guys in the next one. So thanks for watching. Bye. You know this is mommy's food, right? You know this is mommy's food, not Charlie's food. Corn chips are for people. Well, actually, 
I know corn chips really aren't that good for people either. Where are you going? Thought you wanted a corn chip. Come on. You want a corn chip? Is that what you want? You want one of mommy's corn chips? Ah. No, sir. Okay, but you gotta catch it. Ready? One, two, three. Oh. And try again. Sit. 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 Can you catch it? <laughs> what happened to your lip, buddy? Okay, one, two, three. Good catch, buddy. Say bye, everybody.